Hello everyone, this is Tuba Mirza and welcome to Recoding. All the code used inside this video are mentioned inside the description box. So if you like the work we are doing and if you are learning something from our videos, please do subscribe to our channel and share it with your group because your subscription will make this type of video happen in the future. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to learn about grid system in Swift UI. Grid system of Swift UI is similar to UI collection view in UI kit. Grid system introduced with the introduction of Swift UI 2 during WWDC 2020. Grid system has two basic layouts called as B grid and Edge grid. With the help of these grids, we make exceptional UI design possible. A grid layout can be seen in almost all Apple applications. You may have noticed it in the Photos app or the Calendar app. It helps to accommodate more vital data into the same space by splitting the views into rows and columns. So let's start with grid layout. Our final app will look something like this. First, we create a fixed grid item which is the element fixed in size no matter the orientation or screen size of the device. Create a constant called as fixed which confirms to array of grid items. Then we create an empty array and initialize a grid item class inside it, add fixed modifier and add size of the box we want to create. Inside the body, create a lazy V grid which has columns as fixed. Inside it, create a section and add header of text as fixed and add the modifier of font which has title as initializer. Then create A for each loop which goes from 0 to 10 in the closure. Add color initializer and add random from 0 to 1. This will generate double value from 0 to 1 randomly. And due to this we get different color in each item. Let's start the preview. And here our grid appears. Let's add some corner radius and height of the color view. Inside the fixed array, we create another fixed initializer of size 100. This will create two columns in the grid. Let's add a grid inside the scroll view. Then we can change the number inside for each loop and we can say that we have created 100,000 of view and the performance of the app is still perfect as well as it will take only memory of the item it displays on the screen. So you can imagine how powerful and efficient is the grid. Let's add another column. We can add spacing by using spacing initializer inside lazy v grid. Here we can also add pinned view. We can add our section header as a pinned view so we can scroll our header attached to the top. Let's now learn about the adaptation. Inside it, the element can adapt to the screen size or orientation with the minimum width or height provided. 
For example, it can be two columns on iPhone, but on iPad, it adapts to the given size and makes it three columns. To create it, create a constant called as adaptive, which also takes the grid item array. Then we create an array initializer, which will repeat the adaptive initializer. We also tell how many times we have to repeat the adaptive initializer. We type 1, which means it will only create one column. Create another lazy V grid which takes out adaptive column. Add section with the header. Then inside it, we create similar color loop. And here you can see that our adaptive view has been appeared. We can add more column to our loop. We also add count, but it will only appear for larger size. Let's now check for flexible. Inside it, the element is flexible enough to resize itself according to the space available. Create a constant which confirms to array of grid items. Inside it, we create an array. Then create an initializer with flexible. Then we can add maximum and minimum value. Similarly, we add more items inside it with different sizes. Then create another lazy V grid inside it, add similar loops of color. And here we can see that a flexible appears. We can change the sizes to check what fits our need. Let's now check horizontal grid. The horizontal grid can be divided into multiple rows. The view performs similar functionality to vertical grid. Lazy edge grid contains similar parameters for customization. The row to position each item, alignment in the view, the spacing between grid and next item in the view, and pinned views to bound to the scroll view. Create a scroll view with horizontal. Then create a edge stack inside it, add section. Now create a lazy edge grid and add rows as fixed. Then add our colors. Here we can see our edge grid appears. We rotate our section header to minus 90 degree. 
Similarly, we create our other grid for flexible and adaptive. Let's now create a Swift file called as data demo. Then create a structure called as data demo which confirms to identifiable. Inside it create variable id which equals to in dot random, this will generate random IDs for every element. Then create constant as name which confirms to string. Create another constant equals to in dot random, then add range of 1 to 100. Then create an initializer which takes name which confirms to string. Then we set our structure name to input name. Let's create some example data. Then inside the content view, we require a data from data demo. Create another lazy V grid. For its column, create another grid item constant which equals to array. Inside it repeating, we initialize a flexible grid which takes a minimum value and count of 4 because we have different input column. Then inside it, for each closure, we pass a data constant. And for each of data const, we get our items from it. Then we lay out receptive data from the item. Then we create a section and wrap each inside it. Above for each closure we add respective column names.
and here we can see that a data has appeared like table. So this is how grid works inside the Swift UI. And yes, let us know what you liked or disliked about this video in the comment section. Please do like and subscribe to our channel. And yes, do not forget to suggest some more topics. For now, I'll be signing off. We'll definitely see you all in the next video.